When I built this Montessori station last year, I needed to relocate and somewhat downsize my lathe and the stand that it was sitting on. So relatively recently, we picked up this universal metal lathe stand and it is fantastic. It was relatively inexpensive. It took about 20 minutes to assemble. Best of all, my wife and I are different heights. So all we have to do is move these four bolts down to the different marker to get it at her height or at my height. The only problem is that that lathe stand doesn't offer any sort of tool support at all. The cabinet next to it, the sharpening station, is all full of sharpening supplies and all the other lathe accessories, but not the actual chisels. I could put something on the wall, but then you're gonna to have to reach over the lathe and that can be a little bit dangerous. This space here is about all I've got for tool storage. So today I'm gonna build a mobile cart that slides into here that stores all my lathe tools. I started by dimensioning all the stock to be square four sides. Although I'm using hardwood for this, it's 90 by 45, standard construction timber size. Using the crosscut sled, I could cut the parts to length, first by squaring one end, then flipping and putting that cut end up against my stock block. For joinery I went with integral mortise and tenon. Using a plunge router and a half inch spiral upcut bit, I plunge at the start and stop points of my mortise to full depth. Then I work my way down between those two points, taking a few passes. The tenons are cut using the crosscut sled and the half inch dado stack. I nibble away at the tenon until I hit the stop block. To receive the plywood tray, top piece gets a 24mm dado cut. The easiest way to get a good fit is to sneak up on the cut. You can see here the plywood doesn't fit, so I move the fence slightly and repeat. Remember every change made is doubled by flipping the piece and cutting twice. The foot and top pieces receive a decorative taper to form trapezoids. This isn't needed, but it does make it look a lot nicer. The taper is cleaned up quickly using a smoother plane. The scrap of plywood I had was divided into the tool tray section and a lower stretcher. Using an awl and my mallet I could mark out the locations to drill. For the chisels there are two different size holes for the different diameter handles. Then there are smaller holes for the Moore's taper accessories. For my thin parting tool, multiple small holes were drilled, then filed out. With a plunger router, I chamfered each of the holes. This makes it nicer to touch, nicer to look at, and helps guide the chisel handles in. Plywood is held in place with screws. Should I ever get new tools or need to adjust the size of the holes, I can non-destructively remove the plywood, make adjustments and reattach. Last night I gave it a coat of a water-based polyurethane, 
the having some sort of finish on uh, shop tools is always a good idea because it makes them easier to clean just by blowing dust off with a shop vac or blower or whatever. So when we're done for the day we can park it there and it doesn't come out any further than the lathe or the uh, sharpening station and when we're ready to turn that can be pulled out and favorite chisel can be pulled out can set it up next to the sharpening jig and sharpen a whole bunch all at once so for a quick project that's been pretty good and it means that i can get back into turning which is pretty exciting thanks for watching